This week's portion is the portion of Taldos, which is the story of Isaac, Yitzchak taking a wife, Rivka, Rebecca, and now their father and children, and they have the children of, of, of uh, Yaakov, Jacob, and Esau. So the Torah portion begins <coughs> by saying this, the Elo Taldos, Yitzchak ben Avram, this is the offspring, this is the, the chronological offspring of Yitzchak, Isaac, the son of Abraham. Avram, holod Yitzchak, Abraham gave birth to Isaac. So the obvious question is, if it says already that Yitzchak is the son of Abraham, then why does it have to say that Avram gave birth to Yitzchak? We know that already. And then that's one question. And then further on it says like this, that, it, Ab that Isaac was 40 years old, Yitzchak was 40 years old, when he took a wife, Rebecca, for, for, he took Rivka for a wife. So the question is, we know that already before also, that he took Rivka for a wife. It says this, it says this in the last portion. Also the question is, why does it say that he was 40 years old. Why is it so important to know the number of his age, that he was 40 years old when he took Rebecca for a wife? And we know that the number 40 in the Torah always represents the terms of, of a transformation. The 40 represents a number where there's a transformation of self, whether it's 40 years in the desert, the 40 years in the mountain, the 40, 40 days of the, of the flood. 40 represents when there's something is transforming from one way into a new way. And then it continues saying that because he or she was barren, ki akara he, because he was barren, who, the way it's written, or he, the way it's pronounced, because they were barren. But yet the Yitzchak, the Yitzchak prayed against his wife. So what does it mean that he prayed against his wife? So the Zohar, in this week's portion, teaches us that Yitzchak, in contrast to Yishmael, which was the previous portion, Ishmael speaks about Ishmael having many children, that you would think, da istalak v'da la istalak, you would think that Ishmael is on a higher level. So the Zohar says, because the verse says, Mi yimalek gvurat Hashem, who has the potential to speak, sing the praise of Hashem, da Yitzchak, this is Yitzchak. The Yitzchak is an embodiment of the attribute of gvura. And the Zohar goes on to explain that Yitzchak is the idea of dina kasha, which is harsh gvura, and rivka is dina rafia, which is lighter form of gvura. What is gvura? Givura is passiveness. It's restraint, restriction. But in terms of how we relate to life from a place of gura, we're just in a place of passivity. Yitzchak, up until this portion, everything that happened in his life, he was just an observer. He was not a participator. Even though he did things, but his doing was only on the command of other people. He took a wife because his father told him it was a good idea. He went up to the binding of Isaac because his father told him it was a good idea. But he never made a a direct move in saying, this is what I want to do. Kabbalistically, Yitzhak is the, has the embodiment of a feminine soul up until a certain point of his life. And really, the transformation of the feminine soul, which is the passive self of Yitzhak, to a proactive self of Yitzhak, occurs <coughs> at the 40th year of his life. 40 is a transformation of Isaac, the person, from being just someone that is, a, is an observer and a passive participator in life, to someone that is proactively participating in their own life, making their own choices. And this is what the Torah tells us. The Elu told us Yitzchak ben Avram, this is the descent, this is the story of Yitzchak, the son of Abraham. Avram hailed Yitzchak. Abraham gave birth to Yitzchak. There are two ways how you, a person can be. When we're younger, we're known as the child of so-and-so. If someone wants to know who you are and they don't know, they say, oh, this person, oh, he's a child of so-and-so. That's Yitzchak ben Avram, Isaac, the son of Abraham. But when you mature, you hope that you're not just somebody's child, but you become an independent person. An independent person so much that your parent takes pride in you as opposed to you taking pride in your parents. That's the difference between Yitzchak, the son of Abraham, which is his first 40 years of his life, that he's just a passive participator in his life. And who is he? He's just Abraham's son. To Yitzchak, Avram Hailes Yitzchak, that Abraham gives birth to Yitzchak, which is Chesed, which is one attribute, gives now birth to Givura, to another attribute. And Yitzchak is a distinct person. Where do we see the distinction of Yitzchak as a human being? That he is not only just passively involved in his life, but he's participating in his life, is when he takes a stand. So even though the Torah tells us already before that he got married, it says again, it repeats itself, because now at the 40th year, he takes himself for a wife. And then when they're, when they're barren and they cannot have children, Yitzchak stands in contrast to his wife. 
Yitzchak is now taking a stand in his, in his marriage, in his relationship. He's not just a passive participator in his relationship. And once he takes a stand in his relationship, which is almost against his wife, that gives the possibility, which is the opposites, give the possibility of the creation of a third. And this is in terms of any type of relationship, of any type of creativity. In order for us to be creative in our own relationships, or in order for us to be creative within our own life, we have to take a stand against something else sometimes. If we're both part, in, if we're two people are in a relationship, and they're both passive about the relationship, whatever you want, whatever you want, will do. That's not a healthy relationship. If someone just says, yes, dear, and yes, honey, whatever you say, whatever you want, that's what I'll do, that's not a good relationship. It has to be an azer, a helper, but it has to be kenegdo. It has to be against them, against him. Because we need contrast and we need opposites in order to create a healthy relationship. A relationship is not a relationship with one. A relationship is a relationship when you have two and it do produce a third. And that's the place of the relationship. When there are two people that have two separate minds, two separate ways of feeling, two separate ways of being, and they choose to live a unified existence, that's the creation of the third. That's the descendants of that contrast of relationship. So when Yitzchak wants to produce physically children, in order for him to produce physical, a child, he has to stand in contrast to his wife, the opposite of his wife, and his wife has to stand the opposite of him. Because when they're opposite, and then they become unified, that's the possibility of the creation of a third. And this is what the Torah portion is teaching us in terms of our own life. That if we want to produce in our life, it's not sufficient enough to say we're just a child of so-and-so and just go by the merits of our parents and what our parents have done for us. But if we want to make a life for ourselves and really become something, we have to be Avram Hoyle de Yitzchak. We have to say, who are we? What do we stand for? What do I want? And in that place of knowing yourself, knowing yourself not just as the child of a parent or a product of your environment, of your culture, but who are you as a person, in contrast maybe to your culture, in <coughs> contrast maybe to your environment, who are you as a person, and that gives you the possibility of really creating something for yourself and creating fruit and production of something positive of your existence.